What's up guys, it's Friday and so you know what time it is. Time for What The Fitness. All right, it has been a while since our friend Paul Saladino has been on What The Fitness and now he's back. Now I gotta say, I watched this, it's not nearly as bad as some of his other content, but I believe it is missing some pretty significant nuance. So, at least Paul's wearing a shirt in this one and for that, Paul, we thank you. All right, let's see what he has to say about French fries. Eating this is like smoking a pack of these. A recent study found that the amount of toxic chemicals like acrolein and aldehydes in a large fry at McDonald's is equivalent to what you get from smoking 25 cigarettes. This is because the oils used in the frying of these french fries, seed oils like canola and soybean, seed are unstable oils. when you heat them. And they sit in the McDonald's fryers and that produces toxic chemicals. Acrolein, alpha beta unsaturated aldehyde, all of these chemicals are associated with cancer, just like this. If you want to eat french fries, cook them in tallow. The same study also explains that saturated fats, like those dominant in animal fats, do not oxidize, do not create the same toxic byproducts when you heat them. So the next time you go to eat McDonald's french fries or french fries from any of your favorite fast food place, think about the fact that you're basically smoking a pack of cigarettes. So this is the case of like one truth and three lies. Okay, so, is it true that if you're eating French fries that are fried, reheated, fried, reheated, yes, you will have some of those acrylamide byproducts, and yes, those are also present in cigarettes. But what he's doing is basically taking that and saying this is the same as smoking. This would assume that these chemicals he's talking about, like acrylamide, encompass all of the carcinogenic effects of smoking. That's a pretty big leap. Also, let's think about the fact that the dosage makes the poison. Are those levels of acrylamide going to cause cancer? Now, there is one study showing that the levels of acrylamide are associated with cancer, but the problem with that is the confounding variables because people who eat more of these chemicals are eating more processed foods, they're eating more calories. There is a lot of confounding variables there. If we look at the research on smoking, versus french fry consumption, because there is studies on that as well, and the risk of cancer. One study looked at fried potato consumption and found that there was no association with cancer, regardless of the method of preparation. Another study, more recently, looked at potato consumption, found that it was not associated with cancer with any form of preparation, except for french fries. They found that those had the risk factor of about 1.5, which is basically a 50% increase in the risk of cancer mortality. So not cancer incidence, but dying from cancer. There is a difference. There was no difference in incidence. So it didn't increase the likelihood of you getting cancer, increase the likelihood of you dying from cancer, which seems a little bit weird. And again, that's where we get into data artifacts and whatnot and confounding variables. But they're not controlling for calories. They're not controlling for a lot of other variables, which is just hard to do in some of these studies. The authors did mention in that study that they felt they controlled for some of these confounding variables. They were skeptical as to whether or not that association would still exist. Now, let's say it does. Let's say it does exist. Let's say they increase your relative risk of cancer mortality by 50%. How does that stack up to smoking? Well, if we look at the hazard ratios for smoking, they're not 1.5, they're like four, five, six, seven, eight. That's four to 800% relative risk increase. We are talking at minimum 10 to 20 times the increased risk as consuming fries. So no, I'm sorry, eating McDonald's French fries is not the same as smoking a pack of cigarettes because there are much more carcinogenic things in cigarettes. Furthermore, the risk from fried potatoes appears to be somewhat tenuous because some studies don't find any risk at all. Some studies showed risk for specifically French fries, but again, that could be due to confounding variables like calories. Now, I'm not saying, because I know here comes Captain Strawman in the comments saying, Lane is endorsing French fry eating. No, I'm not. I think if you wanna be healthy, eating a lot of French fries is probably very counterproductive to that goal, if for anything else, other than they are very calorie dense. Is it possible some of the ways they're cooked could increase that risk? Sure, it's possible, but the data doesn't really show that, at least not very strongly at all, right now. Perhaps that will change, but right now, it's just not there. So saying like eating McDonald's French fries is the same as smoking, no, no, 
No, no, no, it's fucking not. Okay, and here's the problem with that messaging. Telling people, hey, limit your consumption of hyper-processed fried foods, um, a good idea, yes. But when you say things like this, what people take home from that, if they're struggling with eating or smoking, some people will go, well, fuck it. They both do the same thing, so I'm just not gonna try to quit either. People don't realize that a lot of people, that's their take, the same thing with diet soda. Well. You know, if diet soda is worse for me than regular soda, then I'll just drink regular soda. That is the problem with this messaging. No, he says, well, cook them in beef tallow. Okay, well, now you're getting rid of any of the possible, you know, end products of these you know, acrylamides and whatnot. But now you're getting a bunch of saturated fat, which raises LDL cholesterol. And then let's talk about the consistency of the literature for LDL cholesterol and heart disease, because it is very consistent with hundreds of studies and millions of data points to support it. So it's funny how he likes that epidemiology when it fits his bias, but doesn't like it when it doesn't fit his bias. But that's pretty standard for most fitness influencers. It's what we call cherry picking and confirmation bias, and it is rampant in the fitness industry, but it's also why I'll never be out of a job. And for that, we thank you. Shout out to Tosh.0. Anybody remember that? Yeah, I'm out.